hand and with the other hand get Romans chapter number 14. That's one good reason to bring your Bible to church and not your iPad. With one hand, you get 1 Corinthians chapter 8. What if I say turn to another scripture or compare them? You can't do that. You can leave that thing long enough to get, alone long enough to go to church. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and Romans chapter 14 together. We'll look at one, then look at the other. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, look at verse number 5 and 6. That's also the same verse we'll look at in the other ones, 5 and 6. 1 Corinthians 8, 5. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many, but to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. In other words, saying there's plenty of gods out there, but to us there is but one God. Romans 14, verse 5. Romans chapter 14, verse number 5. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day, regardeth it unto the Lord, and he re regardeth not the day, to the Lord he doth not regard it. To he that, he that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not, to the Lord he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. For none liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. What that's saying there, people believe different about different things. I think... I heard Brother Derek talking about in Sunday school on some things that are non-essential and not scriptural. And there's leeway there to, to form your own beliefs and conviction. There are a lot of things, if the Bible's clear about, there is no leeway. And so this morning, I'd like to preach, I've never done this before, this morning, I want to preach this morning on Christmas advice. It's that time of year again. Here we go again. As always, there's ditches on both sides of the road and the smart, spiritual Christian stays right in the middle with the Word of God as always. And that's our approach. That's our approach to everything. If you come here to this church, you're going to find out, it don't take you long to figure it out, no matter what it is, no matter what kind of political issue, social issue, religious issue, family issue, marriage, family, raising kids, it don't matter what it is, our approach is the Bible is right. And it is the final authority in all matters of faith and practice. I don't care what you think, what your mama said, how many dreams your papa had, uh, the Bible is our final authority. Now, this time of year, uh, the battle rages. We have uh, many of the sometimes, what, what we say, conservative news media, though oh, they're all about Christmas and we ought to celebrate Christmas and they, and they just drag all the crazy stuff with it. And then on the other side, you have the left-wing, liberal, backslid, college-educated, brainwashed, sin-led news media that says, no, you should not even say the name Christmas because it has Christ in it and you are therefore endorsing religion, and both sides are crazy, as usual. Today, I'm going to give you some good biblical Christmas advice, okay? Are you ready? Here we go. Number one, number one. The issue on in Christmas is I would encourage you this in the next few weeks. Number one, stay balanced. Stay balanced. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean this. Some people who think they have arrived and have advanced special knowledge are totally against even celebrating any kind of holiday at all because they got real smart and read a book or heard somebody preach and they found out all the pagan origins of our major holidays like Christmas and Easter and stuff like that. You'll, you'll be shocked, but I will get letter emails given me down the road for having these red flowers in here and for uh, that, that little 
thing, whatever that is, I will, we will get a lot of letters saying, I cannot believe you, Danny Castle. I thought you was a good preacher. I cannot believe that once, uh, they'll happen. It'll happen in the next few weeks. Somebody will say that we're, we're pagans because we have a green uh, circle with, with yellow, red decorations on it in this church. And they think, they got to say, most of them come out of a church from up north they had a lot of pagan traditions and they flip sideways when they see anything like this and because they, they, they don't understand. They just really don't understand. They think we really don't know the origins of all this stuff. They think, uh, they, they, they say, nowhere does the Bible say to commemorate his verse. That is true. Uh, nowhere does the Bible say he was born on December 25th. That is true also. I didn't say he was. I don't believe he was. Uh, at all, uh, no, we're even near it. Several months uh, difference in his birth and December the 25th. And if, if you want to uh, uh, get you know, an argument about it, they will say this. They will say, uh, I cannot believe you people. You are, you're idolaters. One preacher uh, asked me one time, he said, you don't have one of them bell bushes, do you? Talking about a Christmas tree. And he went back into pagan theology and, and all, back in history and history where they done different things and everything. He said, that's pagan. All right? Let's, let's, let me help you with this just a little bit this morning. Uh, there is not one verse of scripture in the Bible that forbids you to have a tree in your house. I have a tree in my house all year. It's like that right there. It's got lights on it. There is not one verse of scripture in the Bible that says you can't do that. Now, if you don't want to do it, fine. But there is not one verse. Don't play spiritual and get crazy and condemn somebody for having a, a tree in her house. Listen, this one stays in here, uh, uh, some of these, all year long. If you want to put rabbit tobacco in your house, I don't care, as long as you don't smoke it uh, or, or chew it, if you, wanna, if you want, it don't matter, it don't matter. There is not one, you say that, Reith, I can show you, preacher, where it goes back to pagan origin. Don't show your immaturity like that, amen? I mean, uh, that's like saying, let, let me help you out just a little bit. Let me help you just a little bit, okay? Uh, chill out just a second. Did you know that every day of the week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, when, every day of the week has pagan origins in the name of that day? Did you know the early Christians, a lot of them wouldn't even say the days of the week because they thought they was giving honor to paganism. Sunday is the day to honor the sun. Monday, moon, the moon day. Tuesday honors Norse, the god of war. Wednesday honors Wooden, the chief deity of Norse mythology. You say, well, what are we going to call them? I'm going to call them Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Because I don't honor false gods, and honor, but you're a hypocrite if you'll say I'm going to work Wednesday and then say a wreath is pagan. You're just not real educated. Uh, you're, you're just one of those uh, immature, judgmental, self-righteous people that found one little truth and thinks everybody should bow down to your truth. You're crazy, really, is what you are. I, 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 mean, I mean, you just really are. Don't, I mean, to me, to me, one of the most ridiculous examples of hypocrisy that I've ever seen in my life is somebody that will condemn a tree or a wreath or decorations and has the internet. You won't talk about something pagan. Woo! Lord have mercy. We could fill this building with wreaths and lights and everything and reindeers, brother, and it couldn't touch the hem garment of that blessed internet. You talk about something worldly. I can't imagine somebody condemning somebody for giving somebody a Christmas present and having the internet. You know what they'd say? If I said that, you know what they'd say? Oh, but I use mine for good. There you go. You figured it out. It's all how you use it. It's all how you believe in it. Listen, you know as well as I know 99.9.9. .9. Did you know there are over 200,000, 200,000 child pornography sites on the web? Children, 200,000. 
And I'm telling you, and I've never looked at a one of them. God have mercy on you if you do. And you pay money every month to support that. You pay taxes to a government that funds 4,000 abortions a day in this country. Please don't come in here and say, y'all are partaking of the world. You're a pitiful, you're a pitiful, immature, hypocritical, judgmental, self-righteous person if you take that attitude. Time to grow up. Amen. You say, that tree's wicked. And then you go eat at a restaurant that sells alcohol. Mm. Why them designer jeans, them Tommy Hilfiger homosexual stuff, you, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Hey, you know what? In the Bible, in Genesis chapter 9, when God told Noah it wasn't ever going to rain again, he put a rainbow in the sky. If we'd done that and put a rainbow right up here, I'd get 50 letters saying it's of the devil. I'm going to tell you something, buddy. I'm not going to let this world tell me what's right and what's wrong. I'm going to let that book right there say it. Amen, amen, amen. If they start saying pulpits are of the devil, they can jump in the lake and swallow a snake for all I care. I know it ain't. I know what's right. I've got a Bible, and we're going to stick with what God said. Stay balanced. Don't go crazy. On the other hand, don't go completely wild. You know, I mean, act like you got some sense. Romans chapter, uh, Revelation chapter 4 and verse 3 said, you know what's around the throne of God? A rainbow. You say, that's a gay sign. No, it ain't. They've tried to hijack it. It's a picture of the glory of God and the promises of God that he'll never break to us in this world. Are you with me? Say amen. Can I get a witness out there? Amen. Yes, sir, brother. Stay balanced. Number two. Number two. Here's some good advice. I can give you some good advice. You'll listen to me. Number two, don't overspend. Every year, you get caught up in this thing. You get caught up in this thing, brother. I, you know what we done? Black Friday, stayed home babysitted. I did get me a trailer, finally, but I got it on the Black Friday sale Thursday on Thanksgiving Day. From a utility trailer. Hallelujah. But don't get, I, here's what I used to do when my girls was little. I used to, it'd be getting Christmas time, get, and I want to get them something. I want to get my kids something. I mean, you know, and there's a lot of pressure. They said, they're getting this for Christmas. They're getting that for Christmas. They're getting, what am I getting for Christmas? And there's a lot of pressure on parents. And I remember a few years, I would let, I didn't have no money. I mean, we just lived every week with what we had. And when Carrie was just real little, and then Chris came along, and then Corey I did, got more and more. And I remember doing this. I remember in December I said, I'm going to let my house payment go and use that money to buy Christmas presents, and I'll catch up next year. Now, I don't know if you've ever done that or not, but I did it. I don't advise you to do that. You don't get caught up in January. You don't get caught up in February. You don't get caught up in March. Because January is the coldest month. Snow comes, you wind up having to miss work, you wind up, can't, can't, and then and, and the electric bill's way, way higher, and you're behind on your house payment, and then they tack on a, a late fee, and you can't, listen, can I give you some good advice? Don't overspend. Sometimes I've had to do this, and, and our families had to do this sometimes. You might have to, now some of you people sitting in here, you don't have to worry about it. You buy everybody what you want, you know, this is for the rest of us Poor people like us. There's some of y'all in here. Sometimes you have to set your family down and say, look, times are hard this year. We're barely making it. I'm glad I don't have to do that no more. I mean, I might have to next year, but I ain't had to do that in years. But I've sat down and say, look, we can't do a lot this year. I remember taking $200. Well, that was 30 years ago. I remember taking $200 and there's 20 people in the family, both sides and saying, we'll spend $10 on each person and getting it done the best, best I could, and that's all we could do. That may sound like nothing to you here today, but there's people sitting in here this morning that won't have $200 to spend on Christmas presents. Don't forget that. The average American on six, owes $16,000 in debt right now on credit cards. 
I'm not fussing at you. You got to do what you got to do. But one of the dumbest things you can ever do is start putting stuff on credit card. I've got a credit card, but I, I pay my credit card every month when it comes due. And no, that way you don't have to pay no interest. If I can't do it like that, I'm going to cut it up and throw it away. Because you'll never borrow your way out of debt. You'll never, you're, I know, I said somebody bought, had a credit card and they owed like $10,000 and, and the way they tacked that interest on, they kept tallying that up and it'd be like 50000 by the time they got it paid for in 10 or 15 years. Uh, you'll never get nowhere like that. Don't, don't go crazy. And here's your good rule. Good rule to go by, don't spend no more on Christmas than you make in one week. One week's salary. That's a good rule. And that way, you don't get all bent out of shape and, and crazy and stuff like that. And if his mama don't like it, too bad. And if her mama don't like it, too bad. Because it'll be over with in a few weeks. Then life comes back that you got to face. Don't get crazy. It's a romantic time. You know, one of the most, this is the most romantic time of the year, and you'll fall in love and do stupid stuff just because it's cold outside and it starts snowing a little bit. And you, oh. I'm in love. You know, you're, you're just full of the devil and don't even realize that. I'm in love. I'm going to go spend everything I've got on her. No, 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 no. You better wait till you're thinking clear, buddy. You better wait. You better wait. Listen. Oh, Mariah Carey, all I want for Christmas is you. That's the biggest lie I've ever heard anybody tell. She got a $400,000 Rolls Royce. From Nick Cannon. Mariah Carey, all I want is a $400,000 Rolls Royce. That's what she wanted. Because they got divorced a few years later. Jude Law spent $200,000 on a ring for his little sweetheart. They broke up. Let me tell you about a Christmas gift. Paris Hilton, a few years ago, bought herself a pink Bentley. That sounds just like her, don't it? I don't know whatever happened to her. She's about out, out of style, I reckon. You don't ever hear nothing about her no more. $285,000 bought it for herself at Christmas, a pink Bentley with diamond-studded dash on the car and pink, uh, trimmed in pink because of her love and devotion to Barbie. So she buys herself. I bet she's the happiest person in the world with that Giving, she know it's more blessed to give to myself than to receive. David Beckham, three hundred thirty thousand dollars for a holiday vacation for his family. Spent fifteen thousand dollars a night, some crazy place. I, I read, I heard it, but I can't remember the name of it. Uh, Jay Z, three hundred fifty thousand dollars for what's her name? Uh, Beyonce, is that his girlfriend? Uh, Right, tell me, ain't you, Jeremy? Uh, listen. <laughs> hey, $350,000 on pocketbooks, man. Exotic leather purse. Don't overspend. Third. Third, and I'm through. Let me give you some Christmas advice. Number one, stay balanced. Number two, don't overspend unless you're buying something for me. Number three, Honor the Lord. Amen. Honor the Lord. Amen. Honor the Lord. Amen. You can have the best Christmas you've ever had in your life. You'll just honor God. Amen. Do right. Go to church. Lord, I, never, I remember growing up, when I was growing up, I mean, you know, we knew the Christmas story. I was, I was in Christmas plays when we was little, and they put us up there, and, you know, I mean, in school and stuff, and Lord, I remember having on them big old costumes. I couldn't breathe and spit coming down, my, uh, drooling on myself, and, and, and couldn't, you couldn't see out there. It's dark, and, and we didn't know what we was doing. But I remember when I got saved, I got saved up there at Nebo Baptist Church, and, buddy, I, I, the first year I was saved, they had a Christmas play, and, buddy, we went down there. We, it didn't even matter if we was in a play or not. Doors open, we was in church. And we, I remember going down there, and they, uh, old Charlie Pride. Y'all remember Charlie Pride? Uh, he had that song, Out of the East Came Riding, Riding. Had them, uh, the wise men coming in on the, ca the camels and all of that. And uh, they sung that song, and, and they began to sing, Deck the halls of bowels of joy. Fa la 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 la. I mean, I'm telling you, brother, we had the office time ever was. I mean, we shouted, we sang Silent Night for the first time in my life. 
I realized how Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And I thought, Lord, have mercy. I know why he became a baby. That was God in flesh. I mean, please don't tell them old mountain people they can't celebrate that. Please don't ruin it for all them people that say, shout glory to the newborn king. Set God sending his son into this world. That was the greatest day that ever been up until that day. I'm telling you, honor the Lord. When you go to a dinner, make sure it's the right kind. If you can't take the Lord with you, don't go. I ain't going to a Christmas party where they're going to be carousing and partying and, and a hooter girl jump up out of the cake and some kind of wicked, filthy stuff like that and dirty music. No, sir, brother. No, sir. Honor God. Honor God this Christmas. I can't imagine somebody, I can't imagine somebody saying, oh, I don't believe in God, but let's have, you, you should have, you should work. Don't take off for Christmas something you don't even believe in. Honor God. Uh, you know, don't be a hypocrite. Amen. Go to church, go to church. Buy gifts and say, listen, in honor of God sending his son to this earth, I'm giving you this gift in his honor. Give it to your family. You don't need HBO and Netflix and a bunch of wicked stuff like that. You know, you know that 90% of the stuff movies that comes out now, you know, well, I gotta go see this, I gotta go see that. You know, good and well, don't please, y'all. You're never gonna get nowhere lying to yourself like that. Honor God, honor God. I mean, spend time with your family. Do the right thing. Do what God wants you to do. I'll tell you a good thing to do this Christmas. Do something for somebody that can't pay you back. Pay Help buy somebody's dinner at the Christmas supper week after now. I can tell you people in here right now that, that, won't, that can't go unless somebody helps them. And we help people every year. Step out there and do something for somebody. Let go a little money here, a little money there just for somebody that can't pay you back. It ain't got nothing to do with promotion. It ain't got nothing to do where we're all at this party and I'm gonna do something for you because he'll do something for me. Give it to a poor person. Somebody that can't help herself. I can tell you a man lives right up here side of the interstate in a tent in the woods. I can tell you, I can show you where he lives. You want to, after you can go visit him. I talk to him two or three times a month. In the woods! Do something for somebody who can't pay you back. One of the biggest mistakes you can make in life is just hanging around your income bracket or your uh, culture, race. Uh, mix it up a little bit, people. Go on bus route Saturday. We'll show you some people you can do something for for Christmas. Lady sitting right back there on the back. And she can't understand me because she don't speak English, but her kids do. Raise your hand back there, honey. Six kids right back there beside you, Carolyn. Tell that girl to raise her hand. See, Helen? Six kids. Mama can't speak English. Six of them, brother. Meet them before you go. Find somebody like that. I asked her a while ago. I asked her a while ago. I said, what language do you speak? And she just looked at me. A little girl said, Spanish. <laughs> Listen, honor God by accepting his gift. You want to have a good Christmas? Live right. Serve God. If they make you go to a party at your work, you show up, give your gift, get your gift, and then leave before all the hell starts, if you have to. And I don't even think they could have to make you do that. Amen? Am I, am I right? Yes, sir. Listen, people, honor God by keeping his word. Here's you something to do this Christmas. You want the right Christmas spirit? Forgive somebody who's done you wrong. Make things right. If God can send his son out of heaven to die for my sins, I can forgive anybody else for what they've done against me. Forgive somebody. We believe Jesus has answered all your problems, right? Tell you a story I read, and I'm done. Years ago in the mountains of Kentucky, there was one of them old family feuds going on, like the Hatfields and McCoys, except they had another name, the Smiths and the Browns. The Smiths and the Browns. And I'll, the guy's name Bill, and I'll just say John for the other guy. I don't, I don't know his name. I'll just use the name John. But one of the uh, a cow, of the Smiths' cow, got out of the fence and went in the cow pile, uh, in the cornfield and messed it all up 
and they shot that cow. And it started a big fuse, uh, a feud that went on forever. Fighting, one of the boys shot one of the other boys. And Bill's dad was shot and killed by one of the Browns, just like Hatfield McCoy's. And I mean, that feud went on for years. Them two families hated each other. They absolutely hated each other with everything in them. Hate. You ever hated somebody? You ever had hard feelings towards somebody? You ever just, you say, I can't, I just can't. Man, if I ever see him again, I'm going to, you know, that like that. I mean, they shot each other. And they shot his daddy and killed him. And he determined right then, he said, I'll get back at that Brown family if it's the last thing I ever do. Well, he got called off to the Army because back then they, you, the draft, you know, you had to go. And he got called off the Army and stayed a few years. And the whole time he was going to the Army, uh, his mother had a hard time with the kids. Daddy dead. Her husband gone. Son in the Army. And no way to feed them kids. And they started starving. Well, about that time, the Brown family the old man of the family took his family to church one Sunday on, on, on Christmas. And he said he took his family to church. He did that every year, but he wouldn't go in. He was so mean. And he let his wife and kids go into church, and it was so cold. He was freezing. And he said, it's freezing to death. So he said, I'm freezing to death out here. I'm going to have to go in. So he went in there and sat down and listened. And when he went in and sat down and listened, the man got up. And the man began to tell the story of how God so loved this world that he sent his son to pay the debt for our sins and to touch, and it touched his heart. And he thought, you know what? That's what's really important. That's what really means anything. And that man got saved by the grace of God. Mr. Brown got saved. And on the way home, he passed Smith's house. And he looked over there at their house and he saw that woman having to feed them kids. And he thought, man, we killed her husband. And her boy's in the army. So he paid this little boy to start taking baskets of food over to their house almost every week. Take a basket of food. They didn't know where it was coming from. But he had got his heart right. By the way, let me stop right here. Do you know all the trouble we're having in this country about rumors of wars and other countries? It ain't never going it ain't never going to happen work till people get their heart right, y'all. You can pass all the laws you want. You can't do this, you can't do that. Everybody's got to love each other. It'll never happen. So people get their heart right. What's wrong with this world? It ain't the Lord Jesus Christ ain't in his right place in their life. That's what's wrong with this world. And he ain't never going to be right till he is. And he went down and saw that house and he sent that little boy over there every week take him some food. Take him some food. Take him some food. You know they shot your boy, right? I don't care. God loved me. God loved me that much. I can love them. You see how the Christmas story, that's what it really is. That's what it, how it really works. Well, about that time, Bill got out of the army and he come home. He said, Mom, I'm sure glad y'all made it all right. You ain't started this. And she said, Honey, I don't know how it's happening, but there's a little boy comes over here every week and brings us food. Every week he knocks on our door. And he said, Who is it? They said, I don't know. So the boy came that week and Bill said, I'll follow him. And he followed that little boy through the woods and down the path right to the Browns' house. He said, I ain't believing this. Surely not. Them, they hate us. You see, there's a lot of people out there in the world that hate each other, and they can't get over it. They can't. You can't get over it. That's why he came, folks, so we can do that. And Bill went up and knocked on that door. Mr. Brown opened that door, and he said, well, you can shoot me, man. Here I am. You've got me. And he said, I just want to know what's happened. That kid's been bringing my family food all these years while I've been gone. He said, I got saved. He said, I found out the real meaning that Jesus came to this earth. And he said, I'm a changed man. And buddy, he, it worked, and that family's made up. That right there is the reason God sent his son. And what he said, peace on earth, good will to men. Now, there'll never be complete peace on this earth till the Prince of Peace comes and makes it. But we can have that peace in our heart today. And I'll never, ever forget the first Christmas I saved. I'll get criticized for even using the word Christmas because it's got mass on the end of it. But you know what I'm talking about. We don't celebrate mass. We celebrate Christ. 
I began to read them books and began to read the Bible. My heart like to jump out of my throat. And for the first, I was 18. And that year I thought, I don't care if I get anything or not. I, I saved up some money and went and bought, like Paris Hilton, bought me a guitar. In Asheville at, the, at Finkelstein or whatever that place was, a pawn shop in Asheville. That was years ago. Bought the neatest little guitar. But I didn't really care if I got anything or not. And you know what? That's some good Christmas advice. It ain't all about, kids, it ain't all about, well, I want this and I want that and I'm going to be mad. For you ought to just thank God you're not in hell yes. and God let his son die on the cross for you. That's the greatest gift anybody's ever received. And if you're here this morning and your life's not right with the Lord, it'll never be right until things are right with him. Nothing is right until it's right with God. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. Nobody's moving. Nobody's talking. If God's speaking to your heart this morning, I'm telling you, I'll give you some good advice this morning. Take it. Take it. Take it from somebody who's seen a lot of Christmases come and go. Maybe you're here this morning and you're not even saved. I don't know. I hope you are. If you're not, you can come get saved this morning. Maybe you're here this morning and you are saved, but you're, you're just like on a, a bobsled sliding down a hill. Out of control. Out of control. And you know the devil's taking you down the hill. Come this morning. Get your life right. The sun's already coming. We're going to pray. And on the first verse of this song, I'm going to invite you, friend. Get out of your seat. Come down here and get down on your knees and say, God, I want you to do what's right in my life. I'm going to do what's right, God, right now in Jesus' name. Lord, God, do something for somebody this morning that I can't do. I pray you'd take these few words of advice and plant them deep in people's hearts. Thank you for the word of God. I'm so thankful and glad that we have it. I pray, God, that you'd help us to love it, learn it, and live it. Bless our church as we go into this holiday season help us to be a witness to take every advantage of every opportunity that you give us to witness to be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ we'll thank you for what you do in Jesus name and for his sake Amen Just Amen. Come on. Amen You need to come this morning just get out of your seat and come right now The Lord will help you if you'll let it Amen Amen Amen, Amen. Come on Come on, others come. Some of you ladies come. Pray these girls come. And you let God speak your heart. You let God speak your heart. The old Lamb of God. Amen. How about it, friend? Let's sing. Everybody. Everybody. Just as Hey, you know what you need to do? Do it. You know what you need to do? Do it. To be better off. Enjoy this Christmas. Enjoy it. Get a blessing. Amen. Amen. To thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come. Amen. I come. Let's sing. You need to come this morning. Come on. Get your heart right. Just as I am. You have the best Christmas ever. You know deep, deep down in your heart, you're the only person that knows deep down that things are right with you and God. You're the only one. What are you going to do about it? Don't fight him. He ain't going to hurt you. The Lord ain't going to hurt you. You say, well, he's going to make me do that. No. If he does, it's for your good. Like, like your kids. You, what, what you tell them to do? It's for their good. You make them go to school. That's for their good. You make them brush their teeth. You make them eat their vegetables. If whatever God has you do, it's for your good. He's a good father. Amen.
Amen. Amen. So I'm still praying this morning. Uh, you don't want to miss the service tonight. Come back. Bring somebody with you. And uh, all through this Christmas season, right into New Year's, be faithful. Stay in church. Amen. Stay in church. Keep family in. Don't, don't get crazy. It'll be over with a few weeks. We'll be broke, backslid, and everything else. The Lord will bless you if you'll do the right thing. Amen. All right. Let's bow our head and we'll be dismissed in order of prayer. Amen. Uh, Brother Derek, how about dismiss us? Everybody fellowship here before you go.